Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I am doing a quick overview of the Intel Skylake processor market along with the motherboards that go along with it. Who should watch this video? Anybody who is trying to figure out what in the world should I buy? There's all these CPUs, there's all these motherboards and it's very confusing. What in the world should I do? I'm going to make it simple for you. There's three groups, small, medium, and large, basic, intermediate, advanced. I want to quickly cover who should consider each group, what should you buy, and who are these for. Okay, why should you even be watching this video? You either want to build your own machine or you want to upgrade an existing machine. Those are the two groups of people who should be watching this. Perhaps you have a three or more year old computer and you want to get more performance out of it. You want to replace the motherboard and CPU with something more current. If you've got a machine from three, four, five, six years ago, you cannot just change the CPU, you have to change the main board inside of it. Not to worry, we'll be doing tutorial videos to help you with that. However, you can, for substantially less than the cost of a new machine, upgrade many older machines and get basically light new performance out of them for a lot less money. The other group of people is, you're building a new machine, you're going, man, you know what, I've got an older machine, maybe it's a six or seven year old machine and there's really nothing worth saving. Everything has to go. It's like a clearance sale. Everything's got to go and you, you know what, I'm just going to build a new machine. The advantage to building a new machine versus upgrading, of course, is you now have two computers. You can give away or sell the old machine or give it to a friend or family member or simply have two computers. So you go, okay, I want to build a machine, but Lord, this is complicated. Look at all these choices. First of all, let me get the first choice out of the way. There are two main manufacturers of processors in this market, AMD and Intel. I am terribly sorry, AMD, but at the moment, I don't have anything I can recommend from you. I frankly don't believe there's anything in the market today in March of 2016 when I'm shooting this that's worth recommending. There has been in the past and I'm hoping there will be in the future, but today there really isn't. From the low end of the market to the high end of the market, it's all Intel. Now, I mentioned small, medium, and large. I'm gonna talk about small first. Who should be in this department? First of all, this is a H110 motherboard. That is the name of the chip set on the motherboard. They will all have H110 even if the motherboard changes. They're all H110 chipsets. Intel makes the chipset that goes onto the motherboard. The two chips here are the Pentium G4400 and the Intel i5 60, excuse me, i3-6100. There's so many part numbers it's easy to get these confused. As a side note, all the descriptions and all of the links to these will be in the description below. And of course, if you have any questions or want some follow-up, please post them in the description below. I will be happy to help. So, we have a Pentium G4400, i3-6100. What's the difference? Why should you be over here? Basic entry-level machine. You want to do moderate multitasking, but not heavy multitasking. You're the kind of person who has one or two things open at once. You're not trying to download multiple files. You're not trying to keep 12 browser tabs open. You're not trying to game while watching Netflix. You just, you're more of a one or two thing at a time kind of person. You want a basic entry level machine. You want something that provides you decent performance for a reasonable price. This motherboard generally will cost you about $50. That's pretty reasonable when it comes to Intel motherboards. This CPU will cost you $65, give or take, depending on the price of the week. That's $115 for both the motherboard and the chip. This comes with a heat sink and fan in the box. There's nothing else to buy other than memory for the motherboard, which is a separate topic, but, but they all need memory, so $65. $50. $115 buys you a basic machine. This is here primarily for those people who are on a strict budget and need the lowest possible option to get somewhat decent performance. This is a dual core or two processor chip. It's got two brains in it. 3.3 gigahertz, which doesn't really mean anything without a reference point, but it's decent. It will get you reasonable Windows performance and reasonable web browsing performance and light, gentle game performance. You can certainly play casual games. This will play Minecraft, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. This will play um, 
you know, the casual games like Candy Crush and what like. It's not designed for heavy gaming. If you're doing gaming, this isn't for you. But it does have decent performance. If it sounds like I'm downplaying it, I just want to stress the fact that it is, in fact, the entry-level chip. And so your, your expectation should be moderated for that. If you have the money, even if you're a relatively entry-level person, step up and get this chip. Why? This will last longer. This has more performance than this does. It's $120 versus $65. So it's $55 more, but you're already having to put in a motherboard and mess with it. If you at all can spring for the money, this is actually the better deal. This has 3.7 gigahertz, two cores with two hyper threads. So it simulates four cores. It's not as good as a true four brain chip, four core chip, but it's better than just two cores. It's kind of in between. Good chip, good for even moderate gaming of games like uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2. I, it'll actually play quite a few games pretty reasonably. Again, I would put it into the H110 board. Makes a nice combination. And this will actually meet the needs of an awful lot of people. So that's the low end of the market. And if you're in that side of the market, well, you may know everything you need to know now. So let me repeat again that the links will be in the description below. If you do decide to go buy these and this was useful, please use them. Moving on to the middle of the market, we have the H170 board and the Intel i5-6500. This is actually my primary recommendation for the majority of PC users. There are people for whom this makes sense and there's people for whom the extreme option makes sense. But I would say two out of every three, 75% of all PC users would be best served by what's right here in the middle. This is my primary recommendation for most people. $200 for the chip, $100 for the motherboard. Why do I recommend this? This has four real brains, two simulated, two real, four real brains. That is enough for reasonable multitasking. You can be running file syncs or file uh, uploads, uh, backing up your computer in the background with something like Backblaze or Carbonite. You can be watching a video. You can have web browser tabs open. You can be playing a game. This can handle much more because it has four real brains. This motherboard is more full featured. It has more features on it than the 110 does. Again, the H170 part is from Intel. It's the chipset on the board. Now, this is an ASUS board. There are other brands. ASUS is my favorite because I've used it many times. It works really, really well. They all cost about the same. They're all about $100. The performance is the same. It really has to do with basically personal preference. I recommend ASUS. They work really well. $300 gets you a nice system that should last you for many, many years. Your average person may well get five good solid years of use out of this. $300 divided by five years is an awfully good deal, which is why this is called Tech Deals. My number one recommendation is right here. Gaming, this will play with the appropriate video card added to it, which is a separate conversation. This will play any current game available on the market. I like this. This is a really good combination right here in the middle. Now, having talked about this, let's briefly talk about the extreme performance option. Who should consider this? There's two groups of people who should be on this side of the table. Number one, gamers who want maximum performance, maximum quality, maximum detail, maximum everything because we want to be uber gamers. All right, that's fine. You should be on this side of the table. The other people who should be on this side of the table is content creators. Do you make, record, and upload videos? Do you edit large format images taken with uh, DSLR, digital single edge reflex cameras? I'm not talking about photos you took with your iPhone on your vacation. I mean, high end cameras. Do you uh, do 3D rendering? Do you make uh, 3D animations, graphics? You know what? You should be on this side of the table. The primary people over here are gamers. But by all means, if you are a content creator, you can't have enough compute power, quite frankly. So. This motherboard is an ASUS Z170A motherboard. It is the middle ground of price and performance of all the Z170 motherboards. There's actually a lot of variation of motherboards over here, but this is the good one and it's the one I recommend. It's $155. There are two chips down here. The choice here is very, very simple. Unlike the other ones, this is actually a no-brainer. The i5-6600K is $250 
and is for gamers. The i7-6700K is $370 and it's for content creators. If you notice, I said those with a certain degree of certainty. I mean it. I stand behind that 100%. As far as I'm concerned, there is virtually no ambiguity about that whatsoever. The i7 is a complete waste of money for gamers. Yes, I said it. This is pointless for gaming. If you don't believe me, go to anatech.com and go look at the initial Skylake review. Go search for this on there and go look at the high-end gaming performance of these two chips. They have them in the same... In fact, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and link to that in the description below to Anatech's site. There is no difference in performance between these chips in gaming. Don't waste your money. I see it on forums all the time. Well, just buy the best chip because it'll be wonderful and help. And it, No, save your money, buy the i5, and get a better graphics card. If, however, you want to render video, example, this YouTube video, this was shot in 4K. This was dealt with in 4K. This needs an i7, absolutely. This is what is in our render machine, and I would do nothing less than an i7. So this side is really, really simple. High-end, extreme performance gaming, high-end content creation, gaming i5, gaming uh, content creation i7. Now these are K chips. Make sure you get the K chip. They sell both of these chips in non-K versions. What does that mean? Overclocking. 3.5 gigahertz. 4 gigahertz. Oop, I knocked it over. It doesn't matter. Because with this motherboard, you are going to click the one click automatic overclocking, and both of those ship chips should run at least 4.5 gigahertz, if not more. I've seen quite a few people getting 4.7 to 4.8 gigahertz out of them. That speed, that clock rate will make miles of difference if you are needing maximum performance. If you don't overclock, this is completely pointless on the side of the table. You should be right here. Now, overclocking. This also should have a water cooler. Just really briefly, air coolers are fans like this. This is a big heat sink and a big fan. This is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. It is an excellent, excellent air cooler for about $30. Why do I have this here? Primarily to tell you not to buy it which is ironic because I'm sitting here, hey, look at this, don't buy it. Why? Because this is what you should buy. Just mentioning it. I'll do a more in-depth review of this later. If you're going to spend $150 on a motherboard and $250 on a CPU, spend $60 and buy one of these. What is it? Liquid cooling. It will keep that chip cool, it will let it run faster, and you will get more bang for your buck. More deal, remember this is tech deals, you will get more bang for your buck out of your expensive chips and your expensive motherboard by putting liquid cooling. This actually has a radiator, just like your car. This is very easy to install, 20 minutes. It's easier than it sounds. If liquid in my computer, don't worry about it, it's fine. This is the Corsair H60, 120 millimeter radiator, 120 millimeter fan. It will keep these chips cool and let them run really, really fast. So, that's that over there. You don't need any special cooling for these. You will notice this box is thick. You will notice this one is thin. This comes with an air cooler. Use what's in here. There is no reason whatsoever to not use the coolers that come with the non-K chips. They are fine. I have used them. They work great. They're quiet. Don't do anything different. So let me re-summarize and cap this up. Low-end, basic performance, if you can afford it, the i3-6100 is the buy over here. It is the better long-term deal by the time you bought a motherboard and RAM and bothered with all this. Get the i3-6100 if you at all can. If you are extremely budget limited, fair enough. If you need a computer and you just have to get something, this is fine. It's an adequate performer. It just won't buy you as many years of use before, it not before you notice its limitations. Pentium G4400. H110 motherboard. Lots of people go, well, that's just the starter motherboard. Why? I want to get a fancy motherboard. Don't be ridiculous. If you're buying either of these chips, Odds are you don't need this motherboard. This is overkill. $50, $100. Put it with an H110. Now, middle of the road, if you want to have the most years out of your computer, if you're going to bother with all this and put the whole thing in your computer to begin with, you know what? This right here is close to $200. Not quite. $170, $180. 
This is 300. If you can spring the extra $120, you'll get more years of use out of this. This will do better multitasking. You don't have to worry so much about having programs open in the background when you're doing stuff. It'll handle lots of different stuff at once. The motherboard is more full featured. It has more connectors for hard drives, better connectors for, um, you. it's got more USB ports and the like. So it is a, certainly a nice upgrade. This is my primary recommendation for most people. Extreme gamers, extreme content creators, by all means, this is almost a category in and of itself, but I want you to be aware of it. Now, I will caution you, there are other chips on the market. It's very easy to be confused. There is an i5-6400, and there is an i5-6600 without the K. Don't buy either one of them. We here at Tech Deals want to talk about value for your money. This is $200. You can save about $15 by getting the i5-6400. Don't. It's 500 megahertz slower, half a gig slower at 2.7 versus the uh, 3.2 of this. For $15, that is a terrible deal. That chip, by the way, the 6400, actually exists for one reason and one reason only. OEMs, original equipment manufacturers. Most of the pre-built i5 machines you'll find have the 6400 in it, not the 6500. The 6600 costs $30 more than this, and it's only 100 megahertz faster. It's 3.3 gigahertz instead of 3.2. That's a terrible deal. Don't buy that either. In fact, the 6600 straight and the 6600K at the time I shot this video, we're $14 apart. That's nuts. If you're going to spend over $200, you should be on the side of the table. Pentium G4400, i3-6100, i5-6500, i5-6600K, and i7-6700K. H110, H170, Z170. And if I misspoke or said any of those wrong, well, you know what? That should just make you feel better about being confused because it certainly is easy to be confused. E if you look at this once every three years, it's easy to look at this and go, what on earth is current in the market? I completely understand. I watch this stuff every day. And even then I have to remind myself from time to time, okay, here's what we're doing here. I hope this was helpful to you. If this was, great, like the video. If it wasn't, that's okay, don't like it. My subscribe button is in the corner, please click it, I would appreciate it. We will be doing builds of all these videos in the future, and that's how you get notification of when we do them, so you can see all the stuff being built and put into cases. Questions, comments, suggestions, feedback, post it in the comments below. If you are still confused about what to pick or you have a specific case you would like to ask about, by all means, if you are thinking of the question, there's probably 10 other people who are as well. Go ahead and post your question. I will be happy to answer questions that you post, and I'm sure that will be beneficial not just to you, but to other people who come along and read it. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.